guys, welcome. We're going to be looking at an amazing film today, the 1979 Japanese anime, Lupin the Third, The Castle of Cagliostro, directed by the one and only Heo Miyazaki. And if you're unfamiliar with Heo Miyazaki's work, he is best known as one of the co-founders of Studio Ghibli, and he's directed a plethora of awesome films, most notably the Academy Award winning Spirited Away, and The Castle of Cagliostro was his first feature length movie, and he hit it out of the ballpark with this one. It is a lot of fun, it's amazing. It's got action, it's got thrills, it's got comedy, it's got love, and it's got adventure. And if you're unfamiliar with Lupin the Third manga, basically, uh, well, first of all, I've got two little books here that I picked up when I was in Japan. Unfortunately, I can't read kanji, so they're practically useless, but the imagery is nice. Basically, Lupin's a gentleman thief. He's very lewd, he's somewhat of a pervert, but all in all, he's a good guy, and he works with a merry band of other thieves. And yeah, that, that's the basic getup. And so, without further ado, let's check it out. The castle of Cagliostro picks up during a Monaco casino heist. Lupin, an adventurous thief, and his trusty colleague, Jigen, are making a run for it with a ginormous loot. However, soon after, it quickly comes to their attention that the money is counterfeit. Impressed by the quality and game for a challenge, Lupin decides to seek out the source of the funny money and take over the operation. Working off his intuition, Lupin finds himself in Cagliostro, the world's smallest nation. As fate would have it, Lupin and Jigen soon find themselves embroiled in saving a young woman from the onslaught of an unknown group of men intent on capturing her. Lupin manages to intermittently save her before she is captured again. In the commotion, the young lady leaves behind a ring with an emblem on it, which Lupin recognises as the emblem of the Princess of Cagliostro, of whom he has just attempted to save. Lupin soon reveals he has met the princess a decade earlier, and since then has held a spot for her in his heart. As things begin to fall into place, Lupin learns that it was the Count of Cagliostro behind the attack on the princess, and that he is the mastermind behind the counterfeit money, and that in a matter of days he is going to marry the unwilling princess. Lupin's grand ideas of raiding the castle of Cagliostro and scooting off with its treasures fades to the back as he tries to save the princess from the clutches of the evil count. Along the way, Lupin runs into many obstacles, including the presence of Inspector Zenigata, who is hungry to capture Lupin. However, Zenigata, unbeknownst, is a pawn in Lupin's plan to save the princess. With the aid of his trusty colleague Jigen and Ronin Samurai Gomon, and on and off lover Fujiko, Lupin works his magic to reveal the Count's dirty practices to the public and save the princess before it's too late. Now, there are many things that I can say about this film and they're all positive. There's just something about movies with thieves in them that I like. Uh, one of my favorite movies is Alfred Hitchcock's To Catch a Thief. There, it's, it's something about watching people sneaking over roofs. I like that. And Lupin the Third, The Castle of Cagliostro, has plenty of that. Secondly, this film looks beautiful. There's it's just excellent detail. It doesn't date. Like anything Hayao Miyazaki puts his name on, you know it's going to be quality. I love the soundtrack. Uh, it's got this sort of 70s vibe to it, and I really like the theme, main theme song. It's very beautiful. Definitely digging that. There is one negative that I could say in that there are two dubs, uh, I've heard both of them for this movie. I've got the latter dub in which they refer to Lupin as the wolf and it sort of takes you out of the movie because you're expecting to hear Lupin but you're hearing wolf. Um, because definitely in the first version it's Lupin. So if you are gonna get uh, a version of the dub I would definitely seek out the earlier version in which they call him Lupin. And they're, I've definitely, they're both good, but I definitely got a soft spot for the earlier version as well because there's a chief Cagliostro guard um, who's got a terrible Arnold Schwarzenegger dub, which is just awesome to hear. I want to see the count at once. Did you hear me? Right now. Halt. <clears throat> Only authorized personnel and guests are allowed past here. 
You mean officers of Interpol aren't authorized? You are altered to vacate the premises. I must ask yeah. you to leave. I am a big Miyazaki fanboy, and seeing what shortly came after this in the likes of Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind, the creation of Studio Ghibli, and all the classics stemming from that, the castle of Cagliostro is lightning in a bottle. It stands out on its own. Lupin, the main character, is a bundle of fun in the sense that he does these death-defying stunts and action, he's smart, he's calculated, and he has a wicked, wicked quick tongue. It's so much fun, and I guarantee you'll be entertained. So it gets a big thumbs up from me. And while we're talking about adventure films, come join me on my next review as I'll be looking at a live-action adventure film, Romancing the Stone. So until then, press that subscribe button below, and I'll see you next time. I'm Patty McManus. Wow!